Hi everybody and welcome to the Traveling Marlins. Uh, this episode we're going to talk a little bit about us and how we got into RVing. So I'm calling this episode The Great Decision. Take it away. The Great Decision. <clears throat> well for those who don't know I'm Mark and this is Gail and we started RVing about 28 years ago. Uh, in that time we have had two Airstream travel trailers, which we really liked. Uh, probably I liked them better because they were riveted together and I'm used to rivets from aviation industry. And we had a fifth wheel that we uh, bought and I liked it the least of everything we've had for my preferences. And then I guess about nine years ago we got this motorhome this bus and again it's a riveted it's a stainless steel and aluminum riveted construction so I'm back to rivets again and uh, it's been the most pleasant as far as traveling on the day-to-day -day basis of what we do it's the easiest one just to travel in you know you don't have to hook anything up really once you hook up the truck you're hooked up and um, that's how we've got started in this from 28 I guess about 28 years yeah. ago yeah and uh, yes Mark was a pilot and back in the day I was a teacher and I was in a classroom box and I wanted to travel uh, and, and I didn't yeah because that's what he did for a living so he was tired of hotels and so the reason why I call this the great decision is because it fit both of our needs. Uh, we get to travel which is what I wanted to do and he didn't have to go to hotels so it's what he wanted as well. So it, it was perfect for us and plus a big benefit was we got to take our dogs with us and we've always had little kind of big dogs uh a great dane we've had a couple of great danes and then dobermans so they're kind of on the big side and having the rv fits us with them as well because like when we had a fifth wheel having them in the back seat of a pickup just didn't work didn't didn't work yeah didn't work at all so it fit what we needed We've had a number of people ask us why we ended up with the Prevo and not the Airstreams and Fifth Wheel. And it really boiled down to it was easier traveling with the dogs inside of this than it was carrying them in the back seat of the pickup, uh, pulling the travel trailer and or the mm -hmm. Fifth Wheel. Uh, we had a friend that had a Prevo and still has it that asked me to go ride with him one time and <laughs> when I got over there uh, he said hey just drive it and I'm gonna listen for something I don't know and that was the downfall uh, I've heard it from numerous people that if you don't want one of these don't, don't drive, drive one. one never <laughs> drive one because I don't I can't vouch for any other brand of motorhome out there I've never driven any other brand but we talk to people all the time who've had different brands and when they get one of these they'll say the same thing uh, nothing drives like a Prevo so I all I can say is they ride great they drive mm -hmm. great um, we get asked about are they expensive to maintain first of all this is a 23 year old coach uh, what we paid for this would be less than most people pay for the new sprinter vans oh, yeah. by long shot uh, mm -hmm. they're not difficult to maintain necessarily it's you do have eight tires you have big batteries on them, big tires on them. So when you do put tires on them, about, you know, the last time I replaced them, uh, we just replaced them a year and a half ago, and it had gone eight years before that. Uh, it's an expense. 
Uh, these tires are big and they're expensive, but they last a long time. We get asked, you know, all the time about the, the dollars it costs to maintain it. And what Gail and I do, we pull money or have money transfer out of our uh, checking account each month into a account we have set up just within our bank. And we put money into a, a maintenance fund for the bus mm -hmm. so that when we have expenses, the money's just sitting there for it's us there. to use on it. And so it's just easier on us. That's, you know, it's not something you have to do. It's just what we've chose to do. And it's real simple to do it. Um, what I like about the bus is it's very easy to drive. It's very, very smooth and quiet going down the road. You don't hear rattles. You don't hear a lot of things. Unless you hit a chug hole, then you're going to hear something. Yeah. <laughs> Usually me. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. It's, um, it's just a very smooth ride, and it has a lot of, you know, I, I'm sure every vendor who builds these buses, you know, it's uh, not the bus, but the change converts it into the motorhome, has a lot of redundant systems. And the capacities on these things are great. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they almost fall over dead when we tell them how many gallons of fuel we can hold. Uh, this particular bus holds 208. Uh, we, our friend in his H345s holds 250. Uh, we regularly and routinely drive this thing right at 1,000 miles before we put gas in it. And we don't have to have it right then but it, it would go roughly comfort i mean without really starting to think about it about 1200 miles on the tank of gas so but you know 900 miles is a regular routine occasion for us so that's why we have the bus and uh it won't go everywhere i guess you can do in a smaller vehicle uh, the airstream i guess we could get into a mm. few places we can't get into with this but this actually is kind of it's very maneuverable it's uh the thing only thing that gets you really is the length uh 45 feet we get asked all the time how many people does it sleep two <laughs> well besides the dog now uh, yeah. it's literally most of these buses, unless you get one that's set up for a bunk, it's designed to sleep two, two people. people. In mm -hmm. reality, it has a bedroom in the back. Two of the couches up front can make into a bed each, but it, they're really made for two people for the most mm -hmm. part, unless you get a bunk version of it. Yeah. And people ask all the time, you know, like I was telling you a while ago about how much fuel it holds. They'll look at us and they'll say, 208 gallons, That's that'd break you. Well, it's the same price per gallon. If you buy five gallons or 200 gallons, we can just go so much further on a tank of fuel. And it gives us a lot of uh, uh, yeah, choices yeah. when and if we need to buy fuel. We have an app on the places where we can get fuel cheaper. And we'll look at that, and we make our choice as to where we want to go. Last year, we left Quartzsite, Arizona, out there in the desert in January when all the RVers show up. And I didn't want to get gas in California due to the, the price of it. So we drove down to Yuma, bought fuel in Yuma, went on over to San Diego, up to Escondido, where we stayed for a month. And then we went on up to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and back down to Tucson, I believe, before we got gas again, uh, back in a cheaper area to get yeah. fuel. So it mm -hmm. gives us, having that kind of quantity, gives us a lot of choices when and if we want to buy fuel. And if we're traveling, of course, we have our... Generator is a diesel generator. It runs off the same out of the same tank as the uh, fuel engine does, and so we can run our generator for quite a long time without having to worry about gas. So that's that's one of the advantages of having a lot of fuel. Yeah. 
But you do have to pay for it when you need it. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of fuel. It gives us options. It gives options. Okay. Uh, and as far as other things, um, the positives with the bus, I love the, the quality of the workmanship. Um, it's beautiful. It's e really easy to clean, I think. Oh, the whole, you can clean yeah. the whole bus, vacuum, mop the floors, and yeah. dust it in 20 minutes. Yeah, you don't need any special cleaners no. per se or anything like that um and what's what's actually been kind of fun is uh people will stop us in rv parks and it, they're either going to ask us about the prevo and, or we'll see them taking pictures of it or ask us about diesel you know not diesel fuel or diesel our dog <laughs> But um, one or the other is a conversation starter, and we've gotten to know so many wonderful people just by those conversations being started. And, uh, you know, when you're in an RV park and you see the sea of RVs, ours is kind of easy to find because it's not the typical color. It's a different type color and a different type shape and everything. And it's kind of like, oh, yeah, there we are way over there. So it's easy to find. Um so I love it. I'd have to say if there is anything, someone asked me if you had to say something you didn't like, what would it be? And it's not that I don't like it. It's just, I guess, on a wish list. Um, maybe one slide. Uh, not any more than that. But but we're very comfortable with it having no yeah. slides. I mean, it's fine for us. But remember, there's just two of us. And then diesel right now, you know, diesel our dog. So uh, we don't uh, we don't require a lot of room, and it's it's well, perfect for us. And without the slide, we don't have to worry about the slide not going in or out. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about the possibility of leaks. Yeah. Uh, Prevo slides have an air seal that when you put them out, the seal will deflate, the slide will go out, it'll lock in place, and then the seal reinflates with air. A lot of them are just kind of a passive little rubber slide that slides back and forth. The Prevost has a different type seal, so we don't have any of those issues that couldn't, They, I don't think they happen often, but they do happen, you know. Yeah. But and along the, that lines about maintenance, We've heard horror stories from people who've taken their coach in to have the oil changed, and it might be there for a month. Yeah. You can take this. We're 15 miles from a Prevost service center uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We're 15 miles away from it. Uh, you take it over there one day, and if you don't pick it up that day, you'll pick it up the next day. I don't care what you have done. You're in and out. They get it going. And if we take it over to Marathon in Grand Prairie, which is two miles away from the Prevo uh, Service Center, ours is a Marathon coach. They will work on different brands of the Prevo type coaches from different uh, converters. But the guys are absolutely wonderful. They will have you in and out in nothing flat. Uh, so we don't mm -hmm. ever wait on maintenance mm -hmm. it's just not that big of a thing for us mm -hmm. and we do hear people who will, their rv will stay in the shop for four to five months out of the year that's not way with this mm -hmm. uh and a little background on that the prevo chassis is designed to run over a million miles right straight from the factory uh i see them all the time over at prevo the charter buses you know, like the tornadoes or whatever, and the guys will tell me they don't shut it down except for cha to change the oil in it, and you'll go look at a bus that will only be three or four years old, and it'll have 800, 900,000 miles on them. Uh, we have 200,000 on this, a little under, I think like 198, and... Didn't somebody say it's just not getting broken in or something? Just about broken in. Uh, so these... Uh. We're going to have it a long time. <laughs> it's a... It's an heirloom. It's a... Pass it down. It's just a different vehicle. Uh, it's hard to explain it. 
the first time we went somewhere in it, uh, we went to a Prevo uh, kind of get together, and we kind of said if we pull up there and if everybody, if they act snobby or <laughs> not friendly or anything, uh, we're gonna we're leave. out of there. We're leaving, <laughs> and it was exactly the opposite. And mm-hmm. I mean, the greatest group of people you could ever want to be around, yeah. and that's really the RV community as a whole oh yes anybody will help you out anybody will do something for you um we've met more friends now that we're retired we've made a lot of new friends that we meet up with and can be all over the countryside now Mm -hmm. and it's just a great experience for us yeah and we're starting our this is now getting towards the end of december we're about to uh, do a little week trip down by the houston area to visit family but then we leave in january and we'll be gone for a few months so this is home when we leave uh, so i don't have any complaints and as far as driving mark does 99 percent of the driving um i ask him occasionally don't i you do yeah do you want me to drive or something and and he says no i'm fine you know he's just sitting in that air seat i actually i cry when i think she wants to but But i did just so you'll know i did uh take a course at the rv driving school School. very good good course i mean i learned a lot it was wonderful and i highly recommend that in fact i probably need to do a refresher course um but it just it was, it's a fantastic course. It really, and, I'll put the link in the description below. And yeah, that's through FMCA, which is the Family Motor Coach Association. They have, everywhere they have big rallies, they'll have those mm-hmm. schools. Very good schools. Seriously, very good schools. So um, I felt real comfortable um, after I went through that course. And I did a two day course. I think it was six hours for two days or four hours for two days. Um, but it, it was excellent, excellent course.